So I'm adding a, 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 a tad bit of a ooh, crappy cocoa. Oh. Love it. <laughs> crappy cocoa. I did say crappy cocoa. <laughs> With a population of over 450,000 Filipino Americans, the Bay Area has never suffered from a lack of Filipino food options, especially in places like Oakland and Daly City. But the new generation of Filipino American chefs are different. They want to open the type of place that appeals to all palates and all walks of life. At the same time, they're also embracing their culture's traditional recipes and celebrating the flavors that were once considered too challenging for Western palates. I took a trip to Oakland, California to hang out with this new generation of great Filipino chefs. They have cool Thai places, they have cool Italian places, they have cool Japanese places, but not Filipino. And now I feel like now more and more, it's happening. It's exciting time now for Filipino food. First, I met up with Janice Dulce, owner of Fob Kitchen in Oakland to learn more about her cooking style, her restaurant, and one of her favorite dishes, traditional, hearty, savory, sour, synagogue. How would you describe the food that you serve here at FOB? It's hard to say, I don't want to say it's Filipino food, it's like Filipino American food. It's food that I grew up eating, it's my favorites. It's really exciting, I get a lot of um, kind of like Titos and Titas, which is like old school, like Filipinos that come in and they're excited about what I'm doing. And sometimes they give you like this, like, the nod of like, okay, this is good. And I'm like, thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Right, so tell me about the name FOB Kitchen or FOB Kitchen. FOB Kitchen. What does it mean? Uh, FOB means fresh off the boat. And it's a term that my brothers and I would use uh, when we were growing up with our family. We're Filipino American. They would say it and we would make fun of our family. We'd be like, oh gosh, they're so fob, or you know, because they talk with a very thick and heavy accent. And I wanted to honor my family because I learned how to cook for them. And also like my palate, I learned from them. And I used that, but I also wanted to be playful, but I also wanted to empower it and also reclaim it. People have even come forward to say that they're excited, like I'm a real fob chef. And they're proud of it, they're not ashamed. And I encourage them to speak Tagalog and teach me. So tell me about Senegal. It's a ginger tamarind soup. It's one of the things that my family would make all the time. Though sinigang is considered a vegetable soup, the dish does start with plenty of meat. In this case, Janice begins by browning pork spare ribs in a large rondo. She then removes the meat and adds onion, ginger, and Thai chili. I think it's gonna be the best one I've ever made. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> The meat is then added back to the stew, along with tomato puree, lemon juice, fish sauce, and water. Perfect. It's just a little bit awkward. Janice then steeps two bricks of tamarind paste in the pot as the stew simmers. In the meantime, Janice sears slices of Japanese eggplant and blanches okra, green beans, baby bok choy, and water spinach for garnish. After about one and a half hours of simmering, Janice assembles the synagogue and it's time to dig in. This looks and smells wonderful. I can really smell that combination of tamarind and fish sauce like kicking through this thing. My family, um, they would basically like have a little like dipping sauce of fish sauce mm -hmm. and Thai chilies. And you basically like take a little bit and put it on each bite. And then the cool thing is that it's so tender, you just break off a little piece. Right. And you pretty much use a spoon as if like it's kind of like a knife. So kind of tear with a spoon? Tear it away with a spoon. Add the little um, vegetable you're gonna add on to it. And then I get a little bit of Thai chili or a little bit of fish sauce and put it on my meat. All right, yeah. I'm going for it. All right, so a little bit of, I feel like I'm not doing it as professional as you. <laughs> I bulldozed onto my spoon. Uh-huh. Right, cheers. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's so good. That tamarind adds such a the sour depth to it. And the fish sauce and pork. The dipping sauce is great. When you put a little bit in each bite, like when I eat steak sometimes, you've ever put like a little bit of salt yeah. on each bite, it's pretty much like the same concept. Mm -hmm. Filipino salt. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it's spicy. You're doing great. Hey, thank you so much. That was incredible. I appreciate it. I love having you here, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Next, I went up to Napa to see Bobby Punla and Jan De La Paz. These two former fine dining chefs have been putting their own twist on Filipino classics with their Bay Area pop-up 
Lika. Filipino cuisine, what is that? It's like... Then we're still thinking. It's just a it boiling pot of yeah. Spanish, Chinese, even American, you know? And then from there, we just created our own take on certain dishes, and that's Filipino food for us. Among the dishes in their arsenal is sisig, a fatty, spicy, citrusy pork dish. Sisig was originally kind of just pork marinated in uh, cane vinegar, which is popular in the Philippines. And then as like the dish started evolving throughout the country, it kind of found its own like modern theme. And that's why you see people grilling it, frying it, and you see it on the sizzle platter these days. We're using pork belly, skin on, because we saved the skin, turn it into chicharron. And then we're also using pork shoulder. All right, so what's going into this, uh, the pork marinade? We're gonna first encrust all the protein with a dry dredge, essentially. Onion powder, garlic powder, and kochigaru, which is Korean chili flakes. Once it's all coated in the dry dredge, we're just gonna marinate it with our wet marinade, which is gonna be cane vinegar, tamari, liquid seasoning, and calamansi. Calamansi is a huge part in it, because, um, I mean, every CC I think is served with calamansi. <laughs> Uh, I've everywhere seen, you go, everywhere there you go. will be a calamansi. Yeah, everywhere you go, there will be a calamansi next yeah. to the sisi. I even throw the rinds in there since we're not really eating that, and it's just the marinade. How do you even go about getting calamansi? It's, it's more like a team effort, if you will. Yeah, um, <laughs> we just asked people in the community if they could donate some, because a lot, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people have a tree at their house, and they're willing to give us their abundance of it during like the winter when it's in season. And then you know we'll we'll just do the barter system, give them something in return <laughs> for the calamansi. But yeah, a good substitute here in the States is probably just use lemon juice. Maybe like a blend of like 75% lemon juice and 25% orange juice maybe. Okay. I would say it would be like the good substitute. I just put the dry stuff that's been marinating, just stick it in. And the best, the best thing for this is obviously to marinate it overnight. Just let it really soak up the marinade, let the meat break down before we grill it the next day. Soon, it was time for the marinated meat to hit the grill. So this is our 24-hour uh, marinade of our sisi, the shoulder and the belly. And just you're gonna get it charred, cooked all the way through, get the crispy bits, pick up all the smoke flavor. And you know, it's more about charring the meat. Yeah. That's the most important part. Yeah, the, the flame's definitely jumping up and licking it. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> so now we're just cutting it into smaller cubes. It's, oops, yeah, I'm ready. There you go. <laughs> And then uh, while my grill is still going with the little cast iron skillets that we have, I'm gonna put it over the charcoal. And this is a very fun way because I actually use all five senses cooking it on a cast iron after um, we grill and chop it. It's like you you hear, smell, see, touch it, taste it. Like, and then just the excitement that you get when you see it through the restaurant. Just like when you hear something sizzle, it's always a, you, someone's always gonna break their neck. It's like, whoa. <laughs> and it's imperative that we get it super hot because that's how the egg's gonna cook because we just crack in raw egg in there. All right, so once the meat's cut, we're just all gonna mix it. Gonna add some chopped garlic and then the mayo that we did a while ago and just mix it all up together. It's like a pork salad. <laughs> Actually, let's not forget the nores. <laughs> oh yeah, the nores. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're, I'm adding a, 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 a tad bit of a, ooh, Crappy cocoa. Oh. Love it. <laughs> Did you say crappy cocoa? I didn't say crappy cocoa. <laughs> Good. So the platter coming in nice and hot. Now I'm just gonna use some of the juices from the pork to, to kind of like do the quick wipe on the plate. I'm gonna put the seasoning in there. I'm gonna create a nest in, in the middle for the egg. And then Bobby will crack the egg. And then from here, it's kind of like teamwork. Some red onion, a couple of jalapenos, and some of the fried garlic. Let's not waste the chicharron yep. skins. So grabbing the calamansi, always helps. Man, this smells so good. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. That is so good, man. Mm -hmm. Everything I've been craving. Even with everything on it, I can still taste a lot of the, the character of the marinade coming through, the, the acidity yeah. from the vinegar. Yeah. But it's, you know, everything just like plays really nice with each other, so. It's pretty awesome, guys. Uh, hey. Goes perfectly well with beer. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> I'll do that. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. much. My last stop was Abaca, Francis Ang's fine dining Filipino restaurant in San Francisco. A Philippines native, Francis has been taking Filipino recipes, presenting them in a refined, upscale setting. We went back to the Philippines with my wife, and there was a massive typhoon. We got stuck there for over a week. Thousands of families and houses got 
washed out, you know, everybody got displaced. You know, after we saw that devastation, we knew we had to come back here, do a big fundraiser, and that was the first time, like, hey, we should do Filipino food. And then that, that just keep, you know, like, adding on, like, hey, we should do a pop-up. Me and my wife always knew we wanted to open a restaurant, but we didn't know what kind of restaurant, and that was just like, you know, yeah. just click. How would you describe the food that you're making here at Abaca? So Abaca is modern Filipino, California-inspired. We are pretty spoiled. We are in California. We have farmer's market almost every day of the week. And there's so much, so much inspiration it's screaming at you, you know, apples, berries, stone fruit is just there. And incorporating into a cuisine, everything evolves. You know, like we take what, what we know, uh, which is Filipino food, and evolve it, adding on California ingredients. Also because that's how we learn how to cook. You know, like we've worked in San Francisco where California cuisine is so important and just, just mixing it up takes it to another level. How is it to partner with your wife on a restaurant venture like this? If you go to the Philippines, you know about the hospitality over there. Like, you give the house to that guest. It's the same thing, she has that hospitality and she is like the heart and soul of this place. So she, you know, she makes sure she touches all the table, everybody's happy, she knows everybody has been here before, a lot more than me. <laughs> and she's just genuine. She loves the people, she loves what she does, she loves the food and you know she has the balance in, in a lot of the things. You know Filipino cuisine has been hard to represent here in the U.S. for, for decades right but it, it only re recently within the, the past 10, 12, 15 years that's been being received and I knew that we need to know what it is actually in order to represent it like it is a huge um, burden on our shoulder knowing that we are saying we cook Filipino food which represents 7,000 100 islands. From traditional offerings to late night cravings to fine dining experiences, no two Bay Area Filipino menus are alike. All of these chefs, however, are united by a renewed pride in their heritage and a desire to elevate the culinary traditions of the Philippines. I wasn't done. We we're going to talk about like how much we fight <laughs> <laughs> every day <laughs> on the way to work <laughs> before we sleep. While feeding our kid, you got that? <laughs>